Street Highway in Memphis, Tennessee, which is the sister city of the Egyptian city of Memphis, and it's right on the Mississippi River, just as uh, Memphis, uh, Egypt is on the Nile, mm -hmm. they have built a great pyramid, the Great American Pyramid right. uh, of Egypt. And the, the man who built it is a multimillionaire. His name is Isaac Tigret. He said that he visited Egypt and he bribed a guard to let him sleep in the king's chamber deep inside the, the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. And exactly at the stroke of midnight, a great light appeared, or Lucifer, wow. and told Mr. Tigret, this American millionaire, he must build a pyramid just like this in Memphis, Tennessee. And he built it. And I know this all sounds incredible. The city yeah. fathers went along with it. And not too long after it was built, uh, there uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, this gigantic, gleaming, huge pyramid that looks out of place. Mm -hmm. uh, the rumor came out that that there that Mr. Tigret, and by the way, he's the guy that owns the Hard Rock Cafe chain. Mm -hmm. You know, their symbol is the sun orb. Well, they worship the sun god. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There again, we get back yeah. to Osiris. Yeah, text has a question here. Yeah. What, 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 I, get all, I get off target sometimes. <laughs> well, that's fine. No, this whole thing, the, the pyramid and the uh, you know building in there, and the, and the uh, you said Tennessee, I think you said. Um, yeah, Memphis, Tennessee. Uh huh. What? What do I mean? People maybe I would hope ask questions. Why are we building a pyramid in the middle of Memphis, Tennessee? Um, he, says, he says Lucifer. I believe he didn't say it was Lucifer, mm -hmm. but a great voice came to him and a light right at the stroke of midnight, at, deep inside the darkness. Mm -hmm. of, of the pyramid in Egypt. Is there? I just kind of want. I just kind of wonder though. With all the, I mean, every time you 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 hear on the news about some kind of religious, um, um, uh, you know, uh, monument or something being stuck in a, a lawn, or you have the Ten Commandments being featured in a in a in a, a government facility or a government property as they call it, or people want to take down Christmas trees and this and that, and the other, and all those little things, those little symbols, they call religious symbols, and you never hear about. Uh, someone getting upset because someone built a pyramid in the middle of Memphis, Tennessee. I just find that kind of odd. Well, yeah. Well, you go to San Jose, California. The city fathers uh, there spent hundreds of thousands of dollars just recently on a huge statue of a uh, of a of a, uh, a serpent god, uh, one of the Aztec uh, gods who was conceived of as a great serpent, and it, all it is is a coil, huge coil serpent. And they placed it on the city square there in San Jose, California. But but you're right. Uh, no one would allow a Christian symbol to be placed on city property, but they have an Aztec god who's a serpent god. Mm -hmm. And they actually spent city money for it. And this is this decade. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any temple or obelisk or pagan structure that the, uh, the uh, Christians in the United States would actually protest against, or are they accept, accepting to anything? Well, when I was in uh, uh, Nashville, I, I called and I spoke uh, to a gentleman at the Southern Baptist Convention. That was their administrative headquarters there. And here's the largest Protestant denomination in the world. And uh, I asked them what they were intending to do about the, the uh, temple to the great goddess and the great statue of Athena, uh, the great goddess, Remember, the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts said that the people uh, of Ephesus worshipped Diana, the great goddess, and he said she's the goddess whom all the world worships. She was worshipped under a thousand names. One of her names, was, of course, was Athena. And so they're worshipping the same god that, that, that Paul encountered, the goddess uh, Diana, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, and they're spending city money for it. And I asked the uh, the pastor there with the Southern Baptist Convention, and he didn't seem to find anything wrong with it or really uh, unusual. Said, in fact, he said, I don't know anything about it, and I, I don't know why we should be concerned about it. Uh, so <laughs> I, I I think it's an, it shows a great ignorance uh, 
uh, by these people that they don't know. But it, but it, but it only, you know, here again, you know, in my book Codex Magica, uh, these things are going on everywhere. Secret signs, handshakes, symbols. The, the world is eaten up, to use that term, with occult symbology, and yet the pastors are totally oblivious. Uh, of course, I, I believe we're in the middle of a great apostasy, a deep falling away from the truth. And so they don't have the Spirit of God to really uh, reveal these things to them. I would have you to know, agree. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would, I would definitely have to agree with you on that one. Yeah, that's, that's why they don't understand about the Parthenon or, mm -hmm. or the Bohemian Grove. They don't see anything wrong with, uh, you know, even Richard Nixon talked about that faggy place, the Bohemian Grove, that he didn't want to visit again. But I suppose that Jerry Fall or Pat Robertson would love to go there and tee to teat with all of the, uh, the elite rich. Mm -hmm. how, is this, how is it that some of us break out of the, con the cocoon of, um, of control or mind control or a synthetic... Um, you know, lifestyle. How is it that some of us can break out of that, and others just seem to be stuck there? And good question. I just don't know. Well, I do. It's very clear. You know, Daniel uh, in the book, the Bible, Daniel chapter twelve, verse ten, says, "In the last days, the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand." But you know, I believe God. God chooses a certain number of people, a minority, a small number. He gives them discernment of these things. They, they understand. Uh, they, they watch television. They, they read the news. And they understand. They're men and women of understanding. And it is, I agree with you, though, it is an amazing thing. And, and by the way, it is a great burden to understand <laughs> Because when you understand that, that and you're compelled to do something about it, to expose it, you become the enemy of yes. those who have spread the lie and have a vested interest in maintaining the system. But, you know, I, and, I, I got to kind of believe that the ones that are, that are still in the, the organized religion or the church, church system don't believe that they're the wicked or that they're doing anything... Uh, evil or wrong or you know because they're all in their church and they're you know their pastors are the greatest and you know they don't um well you're you're right for example a pastor john hagee uh, down in cornerstone yep. he can get up and tell his people it's necessary for us to use nuclear bombs and destroy the nation of iran and god wants us to do this and the people will get up and cheer that, okay? Uh, at, at the same time, uh, you, you have um, uh, homosexuals get up and run at Rick Warren's church, Battleback Community Church in California, and say God blesses homosexual relations, and people there stood up and cheered. So, so I think this great cloud... Uh, of evil has has descended. Right now in Lakeland, Florida, there is a great charismatic so-called revival going on. A man named Todd Bentley is a faith healer. This is happening right now as we yep. speak. Yeah. Have you heard of him? Oh yeah, we talked about him last week. Okay. What a coot. So here's the here's the yeah he's quite a coot, but but wait, this is the hottest thing, uh, you know, in the charismatic world. You know, they, they all got tired of their uh, holy laughing mm -hmm, right. and, and all of their other things, the holy bartender and all that barking, stuff. Barking. And, and this, is, this is the recent new wave uh, going on. So, so uh, you, you know, there, there is a great delusion. Even doesn't the Bible even talk about it in Second Thessalonians? God says because they refuse the truth, he would send them a strong delusion. Now I want to ask you all a question. I, I, I want to know who can withstand a delusion sent by God. No one. I mean, if God is going to send you a delusion and you're going to believe the lie, you will not be able to withstand it. Now, obviously, there are people who are inoculated 
who are immunized against this delusion because God has chosen them. But except for the chosen